Hello, hello, it's Julie Davison from juliedavison.com. Today, I'm so excited to share with you some projects that I made using the December 2020 very comforting paper pumpkin project kit. Paper pumpkin is a subscription project kit that you can get in the mail directly to your mailbox every month from Stampin' Up. It's just $22 in the U.S. and that includes shipping. So just $22 plus tax and you get a surprise project kit every month. Every time Stampin' Up gives us a little bit of sneak peek and so we knew that this kit was going to have something to do with bears and we knew that the name very comforting and that it would be a card kit. But the the look of the cards and the stamp set is all a surprise. And look at this. Inside every box, you get an exclusive stamp set that is not available anywhere else. It is only in the Paper Pumpkin Kits. You also get a ink spot. And so you can grow your collection of stamps and ink each month as you get your Paper Pumpkin Kit. Your first kit is going to include a clear block. Um, about this size, I think it might be a little bit um, skinnier, but you can use the clear block for all of your Paper Pumpkin Kits. Every time when you stamp with it, you can put the stamps on the block and use that block over and over again. So here is the December kit. It was um, a kit that made 12 cards for each of three different designs featuring these really cute little animals. So we've got some cards to send um, some love and support for all your friends and family, maybe who you aren't able to see right now. Um, always in the kit, you get everything that you need. So we've got some Stampin' Dimensionals. We have some die cut pieces, including these cute little animals, um, some labels, some other um, layers here, and Ingvid includes envelopes and card bases. So this one we've got um, 12 different card bases. There are for each of the three different colors. And if you know and you've been following me for a while, you know that when I get my paper pumpkin kit, I rarely make the cards as they're designed. I love the challenge of creating something new with the elements that are in the kit. But if you don't feel like being creative and you just want something that's pre-designed, these kits are ready to go. All you have to do is just sit down and create with them. And then you have lots of supplies like the stamps and the ink that you can save and reuse over and over again. So today I'm going to show you the alternative projects that I've created using this kit. And um, I even you made a card with just the stamp set. Um, I guess I did use a few of the extra pieces. So let's just jump in and get started. If you follow my Paper Pumpkin videos, you know that one of my favorite things to do is to cut apart the envelope. Stamp it up always has the cutest little envelopes in these paper pumpkin kits. And so I like to cut them apart and use them as designer paper on my project. So I just use my paper or my paper trimmer here and I just trim all the edges off and then I can cut it down to size and use it as a background paper. So this is really pretty. We've got the white background here with the rich razzleberry, daffodil delight, calypso coral, and soft sea foam lines. And then we've got this other piece that is a solid soft sea foam. So I actually use that on a card as well. So you can cut apart your envelopes and use them to um, add layers and some different elements to your card. So that's what I did for this card here. I cut this piece down to three and three quarter inches by five inches. And so I'm gonna have that be the main background of my card. And then I'm going to layer some of the other elements on top of it. So this is one of the die cut layers that comes in the kit. So I'm just gonna put this across the card. You know what? Maybe I'll mix it up and do a card this way. And then I'm gonna show you both options and you can tell me which one you like better. All right, so I'm gonna put this like that, kind of center it there. And then we have our little koalas, and these are really cool. The die cuts have little slits so they can hold some of the different elements in the kit. So we've got little accessory images, and the present is one of them. There's also a bouquet of flowers, a heart, and uh, a cupcake. So you lots of different options that they can be sharing. I'm gonna use some Stampin' Dimensional, so let's get those out here and put them on the back. So many Stampin' Dimensionals, lots and lots. You'll have plenty of leftover to use for other projects. This kit does not include glue dots, although some other Stampin' Up! or Paper Pumpkin kits do. 
Um, so you might want to um, add some additional adhesive of your own, especially if you're coming up with other projects that are a little bit different than what Stampin' Up! has designed. So I'm gonna put this right up here, maybe a little, a little higher than center, and then I'm going to add the, um, the sentiment. And even though the paper pumpkin kit includes um, an ink pad, I like to save those little ones and use them for giveaways. So I'm going to big, get out my big pad of the same color. So this is Rich Razzleberry. And then I'm going to add that to the card as well using Stampin' Dimensionals. Oops, just dropped it on the floor. Okay. So this card came together so super fast. Look at that. When I make my alternative projects, I try to only use just additional cardstock for the bases. So for this card, I did just that. I only used the Calypso Coral cardstock for the base and the other elements all came directly from the kit. So tell me, which way do you like this better? Do you like the vertical or portrait style or do you prefer the horizontal? When I originally made this one, I really liked the contrast of having um, then go different directions. So I think I kind of lean towards this one, but um, the the koalas are kind of a long image. So I think it also makes sense to have it landscape, but that's sort of the beauty. When you make your projects and make your kit, you can kind of make them up however you want and you can make doubles. I ended up getting a lot more cards um, from this kit and I still have pieces that I'm working with. So there's the first card. Here's another one that I created also using the envelope liner. And here's the piece that I used that green piece for. I cut that down um, and, and added that here. And then, like I said, I try to include or use as many pieces from the kit as I can. So this piece actually, uh, this Rich Razzleberry piece is also from one of the um, one of the cards in the kit. I cut it apart and added that. So I, the only additional cardstock here is that Calypso Coral piece. And let me show you the uh, the card bases that come in this kit are really great because they have a backside as well. So here's the one that I cut apart. And so the next card, let me show you. I cut the card base in half and then I cut it in half again. So I'm using two and three quarter inches by four and a quarter for this next card. And then I had this piece left over and that's what I used for this card. I cut that down. So this is one and three quarter inches by four and a quarter inch. Okay, so this card, I thought it would be really fun to make a card that did not include any of the animals. Because even though the animals are cute, I think um, the little accessory images are super cute as well and can make for a really great card even without using the, um, the animals. So for this one, I ditched the animals and I'm just using the cupcake. I added some soft sea foam hard stuff for the card base. I think this is a little long. I'm just going to give it a quick little, oh, maybe not as long as I thought. I don't think there's much to trim there. Um, and then this is a die cut. So this came just like this in the kit. So I'm going to add that to the card next. And right about there. Okay. And then we're going to stamp hooray again on this banner. This is the longer banner. There's two size banners. One is long and one is a little shorter. So this is the longer of the banners. And I'm going to put this down and then I'm gonna add the cupcake with Stampin' Dimensionals. Now, um, this kit did not include any ribbon, trim, or other embellishments. Sometimes the kits do. It really just depends on the design of the project. So I decided to add some embellishments of my own. So for this kit, I, on some of my cards, I used the um, oh, Whisper White Baker's Twine. I'm so excited to see that come back in the, um, in the new January through June mini catalog, it is back in a double package with pink and white. And then the other embellishment that I added are these gold glitter enamel dots. And these are in the annual catalog. Here's the item number, 152155. Um, I thought that the gold really went well with the gold foil in the um, in this designer paper and on some of these elements. So 
I'm going to have three dots like that. Actually, I think on my original card, I did five dots. I always like to do an odd number. And I don't know, which one do you think looks better? Um, I think when I was doing this, I felt like it needed a little bit more. So on this one, I've got five. One, two, three, four, five. And this one, just three. Which way do you like it? Leave me a comment and let me know. Do you prefer the card with only three dots? Or do you like it better with just five? I'm obsessed with this color combination. This is soft sea foam and rich razzleberry, and I don't think I would have put those colors together on my own. So I love these paper pumpkin kits sometimes because they give me color combinations that I wouldn't have thought of. All right, our next card uses the red panda. And um, because I used one of the accessory images for this card by itself, I did not have any accessories for this guy. So I decided to make my own. So I used, the balloon builder punch. I punched one from the soft sea foam card front and another one from rich razzleberry cardstock. And then I used the um, baker's twine to tie them up and make them look like he's holding the, um, the balloons. So this is just a uh, my way to bring in some other accessories since I use the cupcake over there. So we've got the red panda from the kit, the card base from the kit, the tag from the kit, and then um, this green cardstock is the um is part of one of the card bases so the card base has um right here so we've got this on one side and then the, the solid green on the other so i cut that from a back and use that so the only card stack i added here was the whisper white in the back and then the rich razzleberry for the balloon Oh my gosh, so cute. I love the way that card <laughs> worked out. All right, I was obsessed with cutting apart these card fronts, um, partly because I just wanted to extend them much farther, and I thought I could cut them into different pieces and use them on multiple cards. And so that is what I did for these next two cards. I cut apart um, the Calypso Coral card, and um, so I cut in half at four and a quarter, and then I cut in half here, so each of these is two inches. I think this is two and a quarter, and this one is two inches, and so I use the pieces for that card, and this one uses a little bit of the this card front, so I used both card fronts to make that, and then do you recognize this circle? It is the striped circle upside down. I, I wanted to use it, but I thought it was a little too busy to go behind the koalas. And so I just turned the, the circle around and used the backside so that the koalas can pop against the white circle. So two more cards. Again, here I added the baker's twine and the um, glittery enamel dots. But otherwise, the only extra card stock is the basic gray card bases that I used for these cards. All right, here's another way that I cut apart the Calypso Coral card. Um, I'm going to actually get out my paper trimmer and walk you through this one. So um, I wanted to include both the top and the bottom here. And so first I cut at two, um, two and a half inches, cut down the center, so I'll save that for another card. Um, and I wanted to have both the, um, actually I wanna use this version because I like to have those at the, those at the top. So let's cut, <laughs> let's save this side. I want to have those on my card. And so I'm going to have about two inches. I'm going to line up the score line at two inches, uh, maybe two and a quarter. Um, and then save that front of the card. And then for this, I'm going to turn it and cut at five and a half. Okay, so now I've got a piece for my card base that has the solid at the top and the pattern at the bottom. And I'm gonna use this on my card and just cover up the middle where the score line is with one of those little banners. So this is one of the longer banners. And I'm gonna put that across, across the score line to cover it up. And Daffodil Delight is one of those colors that <laughs> I struggle with sometimes because it's so bright. But for this card, I pulled in a Daffodil Delight card base because the present is Daffodil Delight and Calypso Coral. So I thought it would match really well. So I'm gonna put this onto a Daffodil Delight card base. I'm gonna go over here on the right side with it. And, oh, it looks like I have just an extra, a little bit of extra. Let me get my paper trimmer and just trim that. Down. Sometimes paper is a little bit um, 
like a little bit bigger than eight and a half or a little bit bigger than 11. And so sometimes you, you might have to trim a little extra off or compensate accordingly. So I'm gonna put this on now and I wanna leave just a little bit of room because I want it to kind of hug that right side. And then the bear is going to come on with Stampin' Dimensionals. So let's get those out. First, I'm going to give a little adhesive on the present so that it doesn't pop out. And these die cuts have that little slit so he can look like he is holding the present. Isn't that so clever? Both the koalas and the bear have that little slit. And then the red panda um, is... He doesn't have a slit. So on the original card design, he's just more like um, presenting the heart. So sort of holding it on the tip there of his paw. All right, so we're gonna do stamp dimensionals on this and then we're going to add a sentiment. And um, this one doesn't have any rich razzleberry on it and so instead of using rich raspberry i'm going to clean my stamp really quick and i'm going to use basic gray so i did bring in another another ink color for this card and i'm going to do hooray right at the top okay so one final little touch is um adding just a little bit of Baker's Twine there to finish that off. And I actually have a second color variation for this one. I also made one using the soft seafoam card base and the cupcake. And I can't decide which one I like better. I love that this one is bright, but I am so obsessed with that combination of the soft seafoam and the rich raspberry. So leave me a comment and tell me what you think. Do you prefer the purple card with the cupcake or the yellow card with the present? this or that <laughs> leave me a comment and let me know which one is your favorite uh let's see what is next i have another card here where i cut apart the soft sea foam so i cut it apart for this card and then i used um a piece again over here and here's another option to go with the koalas you can do the little heart and then this is the short banner hooray so again the only card stock i added here was the rich raspberry card base and then i did add some whisper white for the card layer this pink one is from um that was the other half of the the card front here. So that's two and three quarter inches by four and a quarter. Oh my gosh, can you keep up with all these cards? They're just so stinking cute. Let's make one with the red panda because we haven't gotten to him yet. So here's our red panda. I picked out the bouquet of flowers for him. And then I've got the die cut square. So it comes just like this. I didn't have to cut it. And this is again, a part of the card back. I cut that down to two inches. So it's two inches by five and a quarter. Um, actually, I'm sorry, five and a half. And then I am going to um, use the Taylor Tag Punch to punch a banner tip. I love this punch, it's so versatile, and I love it for punching my banners because I can see where I'm punching. So I'm gonna lay this down on the cardstock first, and then we're going to add the other elements on top. So this is going to go right across the center this is another one where I feel like it could go um, either direction. Like we could have a horizontal or a vertical card. Um, I just realized that I can't show you the other. I, I put this on <laughs> backwards for doing a, a vertical um, card. So I'm going to stick with the landscape here and <laughs> we'll, we'll make it work. Okay, so let's see. Let's do Stampin' Dimensionals with this guy. And... Then we're gonna do stamp and dimensionals underneath the flowers as well. Let's see. For this one, we're gonna use that circle die cut tag. So that came in the kit and I love the sentiment that goes with that. It says, you are on my mind. And so I just think that's perfect because you can send that to anybody almost for any reason, right? Anytime you're thinking of someone, and they're on your mind it could be just because or it could be because they're not feeling well or you're just thinking of them so love that sentiment you are on my mind i feel like it just works for so many different things so i'll just tuck that back here you are on my mind 
And to finish out this card, I added some twine and some of those glitter enamel dots. I think it really dresses up the card and finishes it up nicely, don't you? So this is the card I was saying. You could turn it and have it be a vertical card. You could just turn that element and have it be vertical instead. So I think you could go both directions on that if you wanted to. For the final card, I used the stamp set. And where did the stamp set go? Here it is. <laughs> um, Stampin' Up! has um, little stamp case inserts that you can print. Okay, so you can print this out on your printer and then you can get empty stamp cases in my online store. I will include the link to both the stamp case insert and the, the empty stamp cases in my online store. This is a really great way to store your stamps when you're all done with your kit and build your collection. So you have the original projects on the front, the images that come in the stamp set on the back, and then you even have a spine that shows what kit it came from. So for this last card, I ran out of the die cut bears and so I stamped and colored some with my stamp and blends. I was trying to match the bear in the die cut and so the colors that I chose to use were the ivory stamp and blends and then I used the light rococo rose for the cheeks and the light and dark cinnamon cider. So those are the colors and I think I got pretty close to um, to the die cut coloring. This stamp image is a little bit smaller than the original die cut, but he looks pretty close and pretty similar. So I also used the stamp for the bouquet to create this card. And so I guess this is kind of similar with the square, just going the other direction. So here I colored, um, I colored the bear, I stamped the uh, bouquet in rich razzleberry and then I added some of those glitter enamel dots to each of the flowers to dress them up. The other pieces, the square, the circle, and the banner here came from the kit and then the only cardstock that I added was the cinnamon cider. Oh my goodness, that is my last project. I hope that you enjoyed these very comforting alternative projects. If you love your very comforting kit, the refills are available in the online store right now. You can get refills of the very comforting kit if you are a Paper Pumpkin subscriber. It's item number 155345. Refills are $10 while supplies last and right before I filmed this video I checked and they are still available. So make sure to get them. There are some other pass kits and refills available in the online store as well. If you're not a Paper Pumpkin subscriber yet, I hope that you will consider subscribing. If you subscribe by January 10th, the next kit is called Sending Hearts. And so the information that we have about it is that it will include enough supplies to create eight cards with coordinating envelopes. And then there is an optional add-on. So the little love boxes are something that you can purchase separately. So you can get that in my online store. In fact, if you're going there for a refill kit, you can get the little love boxes at the same time. For um, subscribers, it is item number 156842. It's $8 and it includes 20 printed mini boxes, 24 decorative die cuts and labels. So you can see here in the picture, these are like little mini paper pumpkin style boxes. And then we've got some pink labels and these cute, cute, cute little snail mail die cut um, snails. So I'm super excited. I just placed an order to get my add on and I can't wait to see how I can coordinate these boxes with the Sending Hearts Paper Pumpkin Kit, which is a kit to make cards. So if you want this kit too, make sure that you subscribe by January 10th and you can subscribe with me at tinyurl.com slash paper pumpkin subscribe. When you subscribe with me in the United States, I will send you 10 to 12 bonus ideas every single month using the kit. So I'm sending those out uh, in the next 24 hours to my own subscribers so they can have some extra ideas using the Berry Comforting Kit. And these are going to be additional ideas, not just the ones that I've shared in the video today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed all these project ideas, whether or not you subscribe to Paper Pumpkin or not. Hopefully these layouts and colors will inspire you to stamp at home. Thanks again for watching. Happy stamping!